the long-awaited DWAC catalyst is now among us. Presidential announcement, formal announcement tomorrow is going to be happening. President Trump is going to speak and announce his official presidency running. What we are waiting for is for him to put in a bid for a Speaker of the House. If he does put in that Speaker of the House announcement, you're going to see DWAC really run. Now, when can we run, though? How far can it go? Well, we can potentially find out within this video. What is up, you guys? Thank you so much for stopping by. This is Arca coming at you with a DWAC, DWAC, Statistical and Technical Threat of Analysis. Uh, if you hear my voice a little different, it's just I'm not feeling too well, you guys. Uh, I'm a little under the weather, but we definitely need to make sure that we keep going, right? So let's look at this chart first. We, we are looking at the eight-hour chart, and this is the descending channel that we have been riding. We have since broken out of it. We have now confirmed the newly converted resistance into support and have continued to the upside. Uh, the rejection that we are currently getting is due to the not 236 Fibonacci ratio sitting at about $27.50. 53 cents, which is right at about where we closed today. If you can take a look at the prior day's candle, we can actually see that we use that knot through uh, 236 as a form of resistance as well. So this is an area for us to be able to, to uh, combat. Now let's make a trend line uh, and just take a look at where we're sitting within the, the broader scope of price action. Uh, you can see right over here that this candle has used it as resistance and closed right at it. Uh, all of these candles using it as a form of support before a continuation onto the upside. You can see right here, this was all support before failure. And it looks like an inflection point to me, you guys. So this is, a, this is potentially a, uh, a price that we are going to need to break through in order to continue to the upside. And... If we're looking at this in the smaller time scale, uh, which is this Fibonacci retracement, you can see that it is, in fact, the one spot 618 that we are facing that resistance from. We do have to be very careful when we are facing resistance from uh, 618 ratio, as this is the golden mean, and it usually, usually has... These, the broader sentiment or psychology within the trade take the price to. We usually use this as a great form of support and resistance. Uh, so definitely we have to keep an eye on this. Uh, the good thing is, is that j basing this or judging this on solely price action, just raw price action, this is an incredible move to the upside and there is no real sign of a pullback. I'm not seeing anything too bearish over this setup whatsoever. In fact, we are looking at the 10-day simple moving average. This is the 7-day exponential moving average and they have been now using uh we have i'm sorry we have been using this now as a form of support and a guide to the way up uh all of the major moving averages are below us now which is incredibly bullish we have now made a cross of both the sma 10 and the ema 7 above the 200 day simple moving average on an eight hour chart which is very bullish the higher time frames means that we can give it some more weight we can apply some more uh, credit to it. Uh, this is the this is the 30 day exponential moving average. This is the 100 day simple moving average, and this is the uh, 50 day simple. Uh, very good, very good sign here as well as the 30 day exponential moving average has moved above the SMA uh, the SMA 100. Lots of bullish things happening uh, within the price action for DWAC. Let's go ahead and move on to the next chart and see what we have. Okay, this is the statistical side of the analysis. Uh, as you can see here, we actually start we actually started our ascent based on our implied path, and we are actually moving according to that implied path, which is exactly what we were looking for. So, new listeners, new viewers, what you're looking at here is volatility represented by this indicator BBWP. Volatility is direction neutral. We pair it with a stochastic momentum or a momentum oscillator of sorts so that we can gauge that bias in direction since volatility is entirely neutral in direction. Uh, now, we took criteria. We, we, we took a, a back test based on this criteria. Every time that we have made a contraction level, meaning from the fully expanded uh, volatility down to contractive levels down to here, I've taken iteration from every uh, from every instance where that has happened. And it, ha it should happen from what I consider to be 
extreme levels, which is anything above this 90 percentile. The red line represents that. So every single time that we've done that, I've taken iteration of the duration and also the upside or downside thrust based on that iteration. And the last thing was the iterations uh, guessed correctly to the upside versus guessed incorrectly. And that gave us some statistics for us to be able to evaluate. So we're looking at a 50-50 split based on the downside guess versus the upside guess. Let's go ahead and evaluate the upside since I'm leaning more towards the, towards the upside and not based on emotion, not based on because Trump is going to speak. I'm, I'm saying this based on data by itself and, and the signals that we're getting right now, they have fired off and they are meeting the criteria that we need. One of those criteria to meet is first of all, the volatility component, which is this spectrum line and the moving average, which is this pink line both need to be pivoted towards the downside and beyond the critical expansion volatility zone, which I consider this red line, like I mentioned, anything above the 90 percentile. We're, we're primed to, to break through that line very soon. And now the other criteria to meet was the stochastic momentum oscillator uh, signal line and moving average both pivoted towards the upside. So we are getting that move now, which means that we can theoretically apply our statistical metrics. Please do remember that these are statistical metrics. They are not whatsoever certainties. And most importantly, you guys, I am not a financial advisor. I can't actually suggest for you to buy or sell any asset. Please take whatever I do show or iterate within these videos as a form of entertainment. I need you to do your own DD and we'll be okay, right? Okay, so we are looking at an average upside accuracy of, of course, 50%, 50-50. With an average upside thrust of 23 spot, 23% over the span of just over eight days or 197 hours. This is proof of work. So let's go ahead and apply that 23 spot, 23% move to the upside from, uh, from our position from actually yesterday since the, um, yesterday, I mean Friday, the last trading session since the signal fired off. And that signal fired off right at about here. The 23 spot, 23% puts us in direct confluence with the 2 spot 618 golden mean, which is at about $30.98. This implies that we would make, in the 8-hour chart, a higher high because we have some high, we have a macro high here and we would make another macro high right over here. I wouldn't consider it actually a macro high. I would just say a range high. My apologies for that. And that would that would actually uh, cover a psychological resistance, which would be right, which would be this top candle, which is in direct confluence with the two spot two seven two at twenty nine eighty. Like I said, the the price action is looking great. It's looking it's looking like we're primed to make a move to the upside, and I think the markets are also in in thirst for that as well. It seems like it's very much needed. So our obstacle is absolutely to pass the two spot 618. If we're able to surpass the two spot 618, potentially use the larger time frame two spot 618 at 3272 or the shorter time frame three spot 618 at 3441, we could use this as a form of resistance or that one, followed by us confirming the two spot 618 at 3098 as a form of support before a continuation on to the upside. The, statist the statistics are showing positive moves here, which is why I am still bullish and I am not going over the negative metrics with you. So let's go ahead and get now an overall bias and direction, which is going to be a little difficult for us to do since the catalyst is actually tomorrow that we've been waiting for. Please remember that if he does, this is my theory, that if he does, and, and he, I mean by President Trump, if he announces that he is going to be putting a bid for a Speaker of the House, which is something that uh, I think we need, and they need, <laughs> uh, then expect a rally in the markets, in the broader markets. And this could essentially make all of the tickers that we've been evaluating move to the desired targets that we've been looking at. So I'm going to leave this uh, window open right over here so that I don't, so that I don't have to explain uh, what the RSI properties are. Uh, this is the bullish control zone and this is the bearish control zone. You can see all the zones right here as I go. Okay, you guys, so let's look at the 30-minute immediate short-term. 
we're getting that that same thing that I mentioned to you guys on the previous session. We're still getting an, a neutral signal of direction or bias. So we are looking at straight sideways trading until that catalyst. Uh, the buy hourly is also giving us that same sideways signal as well. As you can see right over here, the six hour RSI is also giving us that sideways feeling. And this is the biggest hint of all. We have the daily RSI pitched slightly to the upside. This can tell us that there is upside movement amidst uh, the catalyst. So I honestly wouldn't be able to give you any suggestions as to as to buy or sell. Other than the fact that of what I just said, that I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm talking about in technical terms, I don't see the entry. And if if the entry uh, was already here, it would have been a week ago or two weeks ago. Um, I can tell you for a fact that if, if you do enter within the $30 levels, this is now more of a gamble. And the potential of DWAC is huge. As we all know, we've seen uh, a $175 top, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and just move. Uh, let's zoom out of this uh, chart and just look at that potential top, which I believe was in October 19th of 2021. Um, yeah, so we're looking at about 170 bucks. This move, you have to know that the conditions, in order for us to, to make a, a substantial move like this again, you have to keep in mind that it was a month away from the blow-off top. We, we, we had the blow-off top in November, in late November, before we started then capitulating to the downside. This was also near the IPO, which was, I think, just a few weeks after, and then it just rocket shipped to the top. So a lot of conditions would have to be met in order for us to reach levels like this. The psychological resistance is $170. We can expect a massive pullback from $170, but I'm not talking about a reversal. I am talking about a pullback, potentially to come back and test the $105 level before a continuation onto the upside. If you guys really do want to see like a, a potential move, I, I we can try to project it. But I can't I can't have you guys trust just this because we're not looking at we're not looking at a at, at a tiny move here. If he does present all the all the the, the data that I'm talking to you about, if he does say that he's going to be uh, putting his bid in for for Speaker of the House, that's going to be huge. It's going to be enormous, momentous. So this this would essentially give us give us some massive headway for some upside moves. So let's go ahead and just open this up on the weekly chart. And put in a projection for a high for a top. Uh, actually, sorry, it's, it's not 171. It's 175. And my apologies if my voice sounds a little different. I'm uh, a little bit under the weather. I'm not feeling too well, but I want to make sure that I'm here for you guys, and I want to show you that that I, I care, and uh, we 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 have some things to achieve in order for us to to get you know to gain our uh, our gains for the trade. Um, this is actually not going to work like this. Let's go ahead and. Just see if we can go maybe from a higher perspective, potentially here. Okay. So let's see now. The one hundred and seventy-five dollar level. If you, if we're talking about from the uh, bottom of the trade all the way up to, uh, all the way up to the the one spot six one eight, which has direct confluence with the one seventy-five. It's one hundred and sixty dollars. So. We are following market geometry here. Another thing is, is that we can look at is, is that we're potentially in a massive, you know, huge bullish triangle right now. If we just make sure to align this line, this line, and have this touch right over here. And also, it looks like a falling wedge, to be honest. So we can also do this. Yes, this touch of the candle versus these two versus this one and you can see that we've broken out and we are now testing that newly converted resistance into support um, now the the upside target or the objective for this would actually change if we make a smaller time frame let's see uh, let's see this on the daily and see if we're uh, okay, yeah, this was just one massive candle so we're just going to have to trust where we are so let's see, we can take 
a trend line from the hypotenuse of the triangle to the lowest point of the triangle, which would be about here, and apply this to the breakout point and look at our next target. So our next target is landing just over the knot 786 at about $95.22. This would be, this would be, I want you to see the trend line. I need you to see to the left, you guys, okay? So I want to draw this trend line here, and you can see that this is the top resistance that we're looking at. The price objective is telling us that we're going to find some resistance right over here, which is where I told you earlier that we can come back and test the 105 area, which is right on top right over here. So <laughs> if the price objective of the triangle is telling us that, then in, a, in, in an impulsive move, I can definitely see us going up to this level. Keep an eye on the RSI, though. We are getting close to that upside. So if we made a 78% overbought with this candle movement, we can definitely see this top out potentially right over here before a sell-off and potentially use our not 618 as a form of support before a continuation onto the upside. This is likely a couple days move or a several days move. But I think this is a pretty good place for me to leave off the video, you guys. Again, I apologize that I'm not feeling so well. It's a little uh, difficult for me to talk as fast as I usually do. If you have any questions or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out to me on uh, Discord, on Twitter. I'll make sure to leave the links in the description below for you to consider joining the RCAP trading community in Discord. With that said, I wish you a good night, and I will catch you at the Bell Manana. Adios.